I wanted to share something with you today in some progress that I've made in regards to Unreal Engine 4 and how to plant flowers and also how to remove flowers again. And this is a tutorial I've been following from Katie, from Making Games with Katie. This is the installment uh, version uh, or episode 7, Making a Garden, in which Katie tells us how to plant flowers and how to remove them again. And I've been following that and I thought, hey, this is this is great. I'm going to take it a little step further and place all these tips I've learned into uh, the Sinti farm set with Unreal Engine. And I've also done the homework assignment. So let me see if I can show you what I've made here. So this is my scene rather than the homemade vanilla white flower that we've built ourselves. I've used the ones that come with the set and I have made it so that I can plant a potato, a tomato and a yellow pepper with my joystick. So I've hooked it up so that I can now go press a button and here we can plant a tomato plant. That's uh, one of the things that Katie was showing us how to add a plant, how to spawn a plant literally directly where the player is. So I've amended this a little bit so that I can now not spawn the thing directly underneath me, but spawn it in front of me. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Then a second part of the homework assignment is how can you make it so that you spawn multiple types of flowers, like a red one and a green one. So again, I've uh, amended this so that I can now spawn not just a tomato plant, but also a yellow pepper which is also nice. And I've also hooked it up so I can spawn a potato plant. There we go. So I can now go around and plant myself some yellow peppers, red tomatoes or, you know, white potatoes. And then I can just go and create all that. There we go. So that is one thing I've done. So again, slightly amended. Um, the original tutorial called for something in which I, in which something appears directly underneath me, and I thought that wasn't that wasn't great. So I'll show you how to do that. But then the other homework assignment we're supposed to do is find a way to now remove the plants again. And I, I, we've hooked this up for a single flower, but our homework assignment is, can you make it so that with one function, and I'm pressing just the bottom left uh, trigger here of my joystick, of my gamepad, that with one function, you can delete any type of flower or any type of plant that you grow. And I've made that happen as well. So I thought that was great progress. And I thought I'd share with you, um, first of all, visually how this works, because I'm quite chuffed about that. And then, of course, technically, how did I do this under the hood? So I'm already having great fun just walking around the farm. I just put in, you know, tomatoes and peppers and, and everything here, uh, just in little corners, maybe in front of the workbench. Is that a good idea? I, I don't know. I can't tell. But <laughs> I can see there's lots of potential for just a super cute little game that this way in which you can use the various growth stages of these things. So, I mean, on one hand, you can go and uh, you can see this. Maybe I shouldn't have walked away that far. You can see that these assets that come with the Sinti farm set, they come in various growth stages. So these are the ones that come with the demo. And these are the tomato, the, sorry, these are the potato ones. Here we have a small potato, here we have a medium potato, and here we have a large potato. So I'm very much looking forward to implementing that, like, you know, plant the small stage and then have the player wait a while until this thing grows into medium and large. And only at that point is it harvestable. So I wonder if I can implement that with my limited knowledge of Unreal Engine. We'll see if that works. But hey, so how did I do this? How did I do this under the hood? Well, first of all, there's a couple of things to this. So first of all, how do I make it so that the plant doesn't spawn underneath me, but how does it spawn in front of me? And that is actually something that I've taken from, and that I've learned from another tutorial uh, by, I've forgotten the man's name, but I will link to it in the description. Here's the tutorial play, no, sorry, the tutorial pawn. This is what Katie showed us how to remove the arms and how to remove all the cruft that was in there for the, for the first person template. So in our code, we're essentially getting the capsule component or the capsule components location, this yellow thing here. And that is where we're, where we're taking the height, halving it, and that is where we're planting the flower. So what I've done, thanks to this other tutorial I found, is that I've added another component here, namely an arrow. And it can be anything really. Arrow isn't visible in the scene. I've called it a spawn point 
over here. And that is what I'm using as an X and Y coordinate to spawn the plant. So I'm using the Z component like Katie showed us from the half height of the capsule component, but then I'm, sh I'm using the X and Y coordinate from the spawn point that I've created. So that's just another component that is here in the, in the viewport. That is really all that is. So then uh, going over here to the tutorial player controller, I'm on a trackball here, so uh, navigation is a tiny bit limited here. But uh, so this is the way I'm planting a tomato. This is exactly how Katie showed us that. Input action, plant flower, then we're printing a string uh, that can be removed later. We're casting that to the tutorial pawn, out of which we're uh, taking the capsule component. That's this thing here. And then we're halving that. We're taking the capsule component's half height, and we're using that as the Z component to spawn the tomato. And in our example, we have then also hooked up the X and Y location of the, uh, of the, of the essentially of the actor location. And what I'm doing is I'm getting the world location of my spawn point, which is ahead of me. And I'm taking the X and Y co coordinate of that, of the world location, and I'm hooking that up to where we're going to spawn our flower actor. So that is how I do that. And then essentially for the three plants, for the three variations of the plants, I'm doing that three times. So once for the pepper, once for the potato, and once for the tomato. In order to hook that up, I went into Edit Project Settings. And then under Input, that is just like Katie showed us, this is how we can add uh, various other actions to it. So we had uh, plant flower, destroy flower. Those were hooked up already. And then I've just added two more. One is plant pepper and one is plant potato. I've hooked them up to buttons on the keyboard as well as the face buttons on the controller. So face buttons, what they mean by that is th th those are the face buttons. And then you have the face button up, down, left and right. And that is, that is what, you know, that's what these descriptions mean. So that is that. That's how I've hooked up these three um, options there. Destroy flower we already had in place. So that is, I've hooked that up to the gamepad left trigger as well. And that then goes and destroys things. But how am I doing it so that one, because that, that one function essentially destroys all actors, no matter what type they are. How am I doing that? Well, this is the original function, input action destroy flower. Keys pressed, we're printing that message. We're getting a reference to the controller pawn and we're asking, is a capsule component overlapping with another actor? And if it is, then uh, what do you do? Let's do that. On the original method, we hooked this up so that we're asking for a particular class right here. So I can say, is this a potato, for example? And then it would say, great, if it's a potato, then all the overlapping potato actors will then be destroyed. But what I'm doing is I'm taking the, I'm taking basically everything out and perhaps that's not an intelligent way to do it, but I'm taking everything out and then I'm saying, hey, what class is this that's in this element? I'm getting the class of that because remember when we spawn something, we have a tomato or potato or red or yellow pepper class. But as soon as we put an item of that in the game world, it's not a class anymore. It's then an instance. So I'm saying, this instance, the all these instances in this array here, any of them, what is the class of each and every one of them? So I'm looping through each single object that we're overlapping with. And I'm saying, hey, this instance, what's its base class? And then I'm saying, if this base class is the child of either a tomato or a yellow pepper or a potato, then go ahead and destroy the actor. So I'm asking, is this instance we're overlapping with a child of the tomato, the yellow pepper, or the, or the potato? With this OR node, you can add another pin here if you need another one. So the, the OR node comes up with just two pins by default. You just add another one with a third one here. If either of these conditions is true, with this um, true or false branch node here, then go ahead and destroy the actor. If it's false, then do nothing. So that's why anything that isn't falling into any of these categories doesn't work. So to prove a point, if I just disconnect this node here, break a line from the potato class, and if I go ahead and uh, compile this, 
we can just go press play really it doesn't have to be compiled i think it unreal engine does this under the hood if i go ahead and uh, and put a tomato a pepper and a potato here i can still destroy the tomato and the pepper but i can't destroy the potato anymore so that's kind of you know that's how that works Anyway, that's a quick progress report on, on Jay's farm here. I, th I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a lot from it. I'm going to link to both Katie's video in the description of this, and I'm also going to link to the other video that I found. I only remember the developer's name. I can't remember. He is making a game called Silhouette right now. It's kind of a detective mystery novel. I'm very much looking forward to that. So he has posted that tip with the arrow. That's how you can spawn a thing in front of you. Anyway, thought this might be helpful. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.